Hello, my name's Marcos Patchett, the nocturnal herbalist, and today I wanted to chat about one of my favourite medicinal plants, the common bramble or blackberry bush. So bramble, it's not a herb you might, or a plant you might think of as anybody's favourite maybe, but obviously there's, for many of us, there's nostalgic value to it. Remember blackberrying as a kid, like picking all the blackberries from blackberry bushes in the summer and eating them. So they taste nice, but that it's not a plant that most people like, particularly gardeners, because it's so fast growing and prickly and aggressive. And when it's full grown, it often looks untidy and tangled and snarly. But I kind of, I like it for that sort of mixture of contrasts that it has, where it produces beautiful sweet fruit. The flowers of it, it's in the rose family, the rosaceae, and the flowers look kind of beautiful when you look at them. But it does have this kind of attitude. It is aggressive and snarly and it's, it's a tough plant. And I like those tough plants. Medically, it's mainly used now, if at all, just for simple diarrhea for uncomplicated gastrointestinal infections. And that's because it contains quite a lot of tannins. Now, tannins are substances that you find in a lot of plants. Uh, they're the things that make black tea taste uh, really astringent, so sort of that mouth puckering, dry mouth thing you get with uh, black tea or red wine, for example. And that signifies the presence of polyphenols, these compounds which they, they work by, they're called tannins because complex ta tannins are used to tan leather, um, which is soaking animal skins in solutions with lots of tannins in. Because what they do is they cross-link proteins. When you put tannins on, on protein molecules, they cause the protein molecules to hook together and pull closer together, which creates a leathery finish if you soak protein or animal skin hide in a rich tannin solution. And of course, that's what they do to the lining of your mouth, which is why if you drink red wine or black tea without any milk in, for example, they make your mouth feel a bit puckery. And when you drink a tannin rich beverage, they're doing that in your gut a little bit. But tannins may work against diarrhea in two ways. The first way would be that they, generally speaking, they inhibit the growth of many microbes for precisely that reason. Many bacteria, for example, are they are their skins are made of protein so if you apply tannins to them it kind of messes them up and it stops them being able to replicate so well the second thing that they do is tannins are anti-secretory usually they stop the intestine secreting so much liquid in response to pathogens like bacteria or even viral infections so they will treat diarrhea symptomatically by reducing hypersecretion in the intestines in response to an infection but they also will in many cases actually help to reduce the amount of infectious organisms present in the gut and that's true if it's a bacterial infection but it may also be true for many viruses because many of these polyphenolic compounds which tannins usually are always are in fact are um but they're also antiviral. In terms of bramble, we mainly just use it in that sort of way as a basic tannin, anti-secretory, mild diarrhea treatment agent. But traditionally it was used for a few different things. So I want to read from my favourite 17th century maverick apothecary astrologer, Nicholas Culpepper's book, his uh, English physician. This is um, the complete herbal. This is the Wordsworth Editions uh, edition. It's the only accurate reproduction of his original herbal. Words with editions. All the others are edited, chopped about, messed about. This one is a pretty much word for word reprint of the whole thing. So it's the one I advocate. By the way, Culpepper, cool this herbal itself is largely plagiarized from Parkinson's Theatrum Botanicum, this compendious encyclopedic herbal of the 60, of the 17th century. Um, back in the day, they, there weren't the copyright laws there are today. So Culpepper, as many other authors of his time did, just lifted whole sections from Parkinson's book and uh, added his own little footnotes to them. So anyway, that being said, so Culpepper says of Bramble, it is a plant of Venus in Aries. 
I'll get back to the astrological signification in a moment, because in those days they classified all herbs in terms of astrological rulerships and the symbolism. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So he says, the buds, leaves and branches, while they are green, are of good use in ulcers and putrid sores of the mouth and throat and of the quinsy, that's an infectious sore throat, and likewise to heal other fresh wounds and sores. Now, this is int this may be a tannin thing again, because tannins cross-link proteins. They can cicatrize, that means seal, the surface of wounds. They help to create, they, they'll cross-link the proteins at the surface of the thing, and they'll simultaneously be inhibiting bacteria. So they'll help to sterilize and seal the surface of wounds. So that may be, this action may be due to that. But the flowers and fruit unripe are very binding, so profitable for the bloody flux, lasks, and of a fit remedy for spitting of blood. Now, the bloody flux is severe infectious diarrhea, or maybe even colitis, inflammation of the colon. And that may be a tannin thing, but lasks means... Uh, too much urination or urinary discharge, which could be due to urinary tract infections or kidney problems. And spitting of blood, that's a whole different thing. That's, that may be TB. So what he may be identifying here, if there's any truth to this, and I suspect there may well be, is some secondary effect, some secondary antimicrobial or systemic anti-inflammatory effect. And that may be down to a systemic effect of the abs uh, systemic result of the absorption of these flavanols and prosanidins or breakdown products of the tannins in it or other components in the bramble. He then goes on to say either the decoction of the powder or of the root is good to break or drive forth gravel and the stone in the reins and kidneys. So again he's talking about uh, mild kidney problems so the propensity to kidney stones. Again these these are historical uses. These have not been ratified and tested by science, but this is something he recommended 400 years ago. The leaves and brambles, as well green as dry, are exceeding good lotions for sores in the mouth or secret parts. The decoction of them and the dried branches do much bind the belly and are good for too much flowing of women's courses. He's talking about heavy menstrual periods. The berries of the flowers, that means the flower buds, are a powerful remedy against the poison of the most venomous serpents. I wouldn't rely on it as an antivenom. But, but, there is an interesting potential pharmacological thing there. Snake venoms work in different ways. Some of them are pro-coagulant, they cause blood coagulation. Some of them attack the nervous system. Some of them inhibit the en uh, this enzyme called hyaluronidase. Um, so some of them, no, I'm getting that wrong. Some of them break down hyaluronic acid, I think, which is a constituent of connective tissue. And many of the breakdown products of these tannins, many flavanols and procyanidins, can have anti-inflammatory effects, can have neuroprotective effects, protecting the nerves, or can um, affect the, the, the function of various enzymes. So all this is speculative, but it's not without the realms of possibility that the breakdown products of the metabolism of bramble when taken internally, the leaves, the buds, not the fruits, or the green fruits, the unripe fruits, the parts of the plant with much higher levels of these tannins, those breakdown downstream products could actually influence uh, various processes, which may mean that they might have attenuated or weakened the effects of some types of snake venom. Anyway, so uh, as well drank as outwardly applied, helps the sores of the fundament and pile. So that's a couple of times he's mentioned private part sores. So I think he's talking about abscesses and fistulae, and that may fit in with the tannin effect of sealing wounds and inhibiting the growth of bacteria on the surface of wounds. Uh, the juice of the berries mixed with the juice of mulberries binds more effectually. And then he goes on to say um, the distilled water is very pleasant in taste and very effectual in fevers and hot distempers of the body, head, eyes, and other parts. 
Uh, the leaves boiled in lye and the head washed helps heal, heal the itch and running sores thereof. And the powder of the leaves strewed on cankers and running ulcers wonderfully helps to heal them. Now, there's a few things there. Generally speaking, he's talking about bramble being a cooling remedy that might lower fever. This may be down to the anti-inflammatory effects of these flavanols and procyanidins and breakdown products of the tannins. But given that he talks about the fever lowering properties being in the distilled water, you wouldn't get any tannins in the distilled water. The distilled water would contain aromatic products like essential oils, which are pharmacologically distinct. So not sure whether that's valid. It would be something that would certainly be worth testing pharmacologically speaking. And then the, the cankers and sores is really interesting um, because there may be direct anti neoplastic action or action on cells that are going cancerous. Again, this is highly speculative, but given that we know that a lot of polyphenols do have some anti-cancer activity, it's entirely plausible that if you apply it directly to a uh, a, a skin tumour or a malignancy, it might have some local effect. Again, I'm not suggesting the use of bramble systemically for cancers, but it might be useful for arresting the, the, the bleeding of a surface of a cancer or something like that. So how do I use bramble in my practice as a medical herbalist? Well, the main way that I use it is I prepare a tincture from it. That's a tincture is a alcohol and water extract. In this case, I make it around 35% ethanol because I want it to be above 25% because that's the minimum alcohol content required in order to give it a, a reasonable shelf life. But I want it to be more water than alcohol because uh, the tannins that I've talked about are extracted in water rather than ethanol. But I do want a reasonable ethanol content as well because the whole of the plant contains essential oil, which have some uh, therapeutic uh, some therapeutic properties as well. So the essential oil obviously is what gives the bramble its blackberry smell, that recognizable blackberry smell. So the tincture I make from the unopened flower buds and young leaves of the bramble, I harvest it every spring in sort of April, May, uh, and then I dry it and then I make it into a tincture. And that tincture I use in some prescriptions for slight diarrhea because of the astringency of the tannins, but mainly I use it in prescriptions for mouthwash. I use it as an ingredient of herbal mouthwashes because it's very good for stopping bleeding gums and the tannins inhibit the growth of many bacteria, including some that would tend to cause oral plaque. I'm not sure whether there's any specific research on that, but the uh, topical, that means locally acting, antibacterial or bacteriostatic activity of tannins is well known. And of course, this is the traditional use of bramble for sores in the mouth or for bleeding in the mouth and that kind of thing. But I wanted to mention a very specific instance of using bramble externally in the way that Culpepper talked about, which is for sores, open sores, particularly in the genital region and potentially topically for cancers. Uh, and this was a patient I saw a few years ago and they had a very severe cancer, which they'd had for many years, a very severe case of cancer where cancer was, I think, colon cancer that had spread everywhere. They were seeing an oncologist, they were seeing a doctor, but they had refused conventional chemotherapy. They were getting their main complementary or alternative treatment from a traditional Chinese herbalist. So they were taking herbs internally. So I wasn't going to prescribe any herbs internally because they were already taking herbal medicines from another practitioner working in a different tradition so I didn't want to mess with whatever they were doing that's just a basic professional respect thing but they did have this uh, giant mass of cancer on their inner thigh now just trigger warning for anyone who doesn't who's a little bit squeamish you may want to just skip ahead two minutes now okay just two minutes because it's going to get a little bit graphic here okay so they had this cancer on their inner thigh, this tumour, and it had basically made a fistula. A fistula is a hollow tunnel because the cancer had spread from their bowel and rectum 
to the inner thigh and just made this tunnel between them, which was all ulcerated and bleeding. So every time they needed to poo, then all the stuff would sort of come out and dribble down their leg. And they said that every time they needed to poo, or sometimes between, presumably whenever the bowel moved, like whenever there was internal movement inside, not necessarily when they needed the toilet, all this liquid would run through that little tunnel down their leg. So they basically had to wear a nappy all the time. And it was very distressing for this person. And it was extremely painful. In their words, it said they felt like acid was being poured down this part of their anatomy. So um, I thought back initially, I prescribed a cream with some standard anti-inflammatory stuff for the external, just to see if that helped. I, th I can't remember what I used in the cream. It was stuff like uh, calendula, which is anti-inflammatory. And uh, I, I can't remember what herbs I used. Anyway, the cream didn't help. In fact, if anything, it aggravated more. Uh, so I asked them if they were willing to try maybe a finely, finely powdered bramble, because I thought the powder would be somewhat absorbent. They were showering themselves in that region two or three times a day anyway, just to wash all the muck off. So I thought the powder would get showered and washed out. It wouldn't sit in the wound and, you know, go manky. Um, and it, so it would absorb some stuff and it would cicatrize and seal the surface of the wound. And there was that traditional use for spreading ulcers and even, as it says in cool pepper, cankers. So they said, yeah, they, they, would, they were up for trying it. So I got some of the bramble from my own garden. I uh, ran it through a very high speed grinder. I sifted it. It was quite a lot of work just to produce a very small bag because you have to sift it to a very fine, fine powder like icing sugar. You obviously don't want any larger bits or any little splintery bits. You, you want it to be extremely fine so that it wasn't irritating and it could be dusted on and washed off easily and wouldn't you know, leave any little chunks in the wound because that's not good. So anyway, made this fine powder and they used it and it was a real, it was really successful. So they said after a couple of weeks, it had reduced the, the pain, it had reduced the discharge. And even after a month, it, it seemed to slow it down or reduce the size, the actual size of the external tumors decreased. Now, obviously it wasn't going to do anything internally. Um, a, it wasn't being taken internally because they were taking other herbs, and B, um, it's it's only going to have local action. Uh, even if taken internally, the tannins would just work locally on the inside surfaces of the gut uh, and would, would uh, also have a slightly constipating action. So this was an external application that worked really well. The issue, the only limitation or problem with it was the application. Because it was just a bag of powder, they found it very difficult to apply. You had to like sprinkle it on. Um, so in the end, after a month, they, they said, well, I'd like some more, but could, is there a way of dusting it on? The ideal application would be something like a puffer, like a little puff ball or a sort of talcum powder puffer that would puff it on. Um, but at this point, this was in my university teaching clinic at the time. I had to prepare it out of hours, unpaid in my own time from the herb I grew from my own garden. Pr producing one small bag took me about three hours of manual grinding. I had uh, about 20 other patients a week and I just, I didn't have time. So um, it kind of lapsed. I would have gladly prepared more of the powder but I would have had to have hunt for an application device. And some of the staff in dispensary, some of my co-workers did go looking for, for, for some tool that would do the job, but they didn't have the time either to, to devote that. This is the problem with uh, complementary treatment of cancer patients, or I suspect cancer patients in general, is that they come to require so much time per person. And if you're in a busy practice, it's quite difficult sometimes uh, but so the take home was in the end, I think I helped this person in other ways. I did other things for them, um, which hopefully made a difference. But certainly that was very, very interesting because it showed that the bramble did do, at least in that case, what it was supposed to do from the old herbals, i.e. topical application to spreading ulcers, specifically in the anogenital region there, which actually uh, reduced the spread. And at least for a time, not only reduced the pain and the symptoms, but also reduced um, the growth, it seemed. That, that caused a bit of regression temporarily. So that's my little bramble uh, clinical story. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Oh yeah, my favorite poem 
of all time is Sylvia Plath's Blackberrying. It's a very powerful poem. It's kind of dark, um, so it's probably a little bit darker than the plant need be, but um, it is my favourite poem, so I'll put a link to a site which with that poem on, so you can read it if you want to below. It's fantastic. It's very, very good. Anyway, I just wanted to talk briefly about the um, astrological uh, classification of the bramble. He classifies it as a herb of Venus because it's a uh, it's, it produces sweet edible fruit. Venus traditionally symbolized pleasure and joy and sex also. It ruled Venus symbolized the breasts and the private parts and menstruation and it also was a planet that symbolized that apart from pleasure and sweetness and fruit and those parts of the body it also antidoted Mars, which was wounds and inflammation and infection. So you can see a lot of those symbolism, a lot of that symbolism in the medical indications he gives for Bramble. But he, he specifies Venus in Aries. Now, Aries traditionally rules the head, but it's also a hot, dry, fast moving fire sign. Uh, and that fits for the actual morphology or behavior of Bramble, which is partly why he classified it as Venus in Aries. In fact, he gives a reason here, which I love the way he writes. It's very, it's kind of, he has this wry, slightly sarcastic way of writing that I enjoy. It's a plant of Venus in Aries. If any ask the reason why Venus is so prickly, tell them it is because she is in the house of Mars. In other words, it's Venus wearing Mars drag. Uh, this is why Bramble has thorns and spines and is an aggressive plant, but it's actually a pretty harmless plant producing sweet fruit of Venus. Um, the other sort of thing to say about that is Venus in Aries traditionally, any planet that was put in the house of its opposite, like Venus in Mars's sign, either Aries or Scorpio, would be said in astrological terms to be in detriment. Detriment didn't mean the planet was necessarily weak, it just meant that it, it undid its own signification over time, that it was often seen as a bit problematic. So it's interesting because, of course, bramble is thought of as a weed. Gardeners get really annoyed when it comes up. It's so tenacious, they often dig it up or cut it out. And yet people do recognise it as a pleasant thing at the same time. You know, we often, you know, brambling, blackberrying, going out and picking brambles as a child is a nice memory for most of us, as I've said. So it does have that kind of dual signification of something that's a bit despised and annoying, but at the same time, something that's seen as pleasant. Um, so anyway, there's a lot more there that I could unpack, but I thought that was interesting. Anyway, bit of a rambly one. I'll put in any little links and interesting papers about the pharmacology and anything I find about Bramble below. This was a bit unprompted and unstructured today, but hopefully of interest. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I, uh, yes, oh, if you like this video, please do uh, subscribe to the channel. Please do share it, watch more. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.